Coming up, Boy George blows the whistle on his boyfriend. We had a press conference and I just said, yeah, I'm sleeping with the drummer. I've been sleeping with him for eight years. Then, he spirals into an incoherent drug haze. Do that, it's very cold. It's in that it was really to do with the fact that here I was, 21 years old, I dreamt of being a famous pop star since I was a child. And I wasn't going to risk it all by suddenly announcing that I was also homosexual and frightening the children. <laughs> George was only 24 and was richer and more famous than he had ever dreamed. But his lover was slipping away. When I realized that there was no saving it, you know, um, that's when I lost total interest in Culture Club. Didn't mean anything to me. So it was never the money. You know, it, it, was, it was about John. It was about being in love with him. And when I realized that that was dying, Culture Club just had no interest to in me whatsoever. I just thought... With John fading from his life, George quickly became consumed by a new passion, heroin. No one knew how serious George's drug problem had become until a trip to Paris. Just as George and John were about to rekindle their relationship over a romantic dinner, George disappeared. I went to the toilet and he wasn't around and I heard this like throwing up sound and I went off. Oh. I said, I know what that is. Because I didn't know that, you know, heroin made you sick and somebody told me that it was around. And I just broke down the door and he was in there sort of stupid grin on his face with white eyes and oh, it was horrible. George's secret was out. It was clear that he was a junkie. But the band continued to tour and John and George continued to feud. The beginning of the end happened one night while the band was on a world tour. John had uh, <laughs> gone out the night before and not come back. He'd sort of gone off to hang out with his mates in Israel in Tel Aviv. And I thought, right, that's it. I've had enough. I had piles. I was vomiting. I was really miserable. I was coming off heroin. And I just thought, this is ridiculous. So I waited until the morning when we had a press conference and I just said, yeah, I'm sleeping with the drummer. I've been sleeping with him for eight years. But I just thought it was the right place to do it. I mean, you might as well be dramatic. <laughs> if you're going to do it, you might as well do it in style. <laughs> so I did. And that was the end of us. Goodbye, hello. George's declaration put an end to the destructive relationship he and John had fostered for the last eight years. His confession mortally wounded Culture Club, but still, they went through the motions. Our next guests are famous for their makeup and wardrobe, but most importantly, their music. Their latest single is their seventh top ten record. This week is number five in our Solid Gold Countdown. Singing Move Away, here's Culture Club. With Culture Club on its last legs, George plunged himself headlong into heroin. He saw no reason not to. I just was excessive, you know, in everything I did. And, and I'm lucky in the respect that I, you know, survived drugs because I took a lot more than your average person would take in a very short period of time. I mean, I was really, really scary. While the band may have known about his drug problem, George had managed to keep it from his family. But as drugs consumed him, they grew increasingly concerned. But at a charity concert in June of 1986, there was no denying that George had completely lost control. George had consumed so much heroin, he would pass out in mid-sentence. Where once they had courted and hyped George, now they sought to expose and destroy him. 